Oh, Frank, 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 Frank. I have had a lovely time managing Everton over on Twitch in the network game this year. We've been in the Champions League. We've won the FA Cup, the EFL Cup. We've got the likes of Victor Ossiman and Ryan Gravenberch in the team. And then I look at what you've done in real life, Frank. And frankly, see what I did there. I am disappointed. It needs fixing. It's time for an Everton rebuild. Hi, right, folks, and welcome to another rebuild here on the channel. Today, we're rebuilding Everton because Frank Lampard has made a right mess of them. If that sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video. It does tell me you like this kind of content and would like to see more of it. Let me know down in the comments what other teams you'd like me to see rebuild. And of course, if you are new, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, all that good stuff. Let's get stuck into rebuilding Everton. As with all the other rebuilds I've done, we have got the transfers up today as of the time of the video. We got Dwight McNeil in. If anything has happened from like Thursday onwards, yeah, they're not here. So sometimes on these rebuilds, I'll get comments like two weeks later, um, you didn't have this transfer. Where is this one went through three days ago? Yeah, well, I re the video's been out two weeks. Goodness me. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, McNeil, Tarkovsky, um, Ruben Vinagra all coming into the club. Um, we've also got the departures of Richarlison, of course, to Tottenham, 52 million. And then uh, Branthwaite's gone out on loan, as have a couple of others. Uh, Fabian Delph has left the club. I think he's on the released players list, as has Andy Lonergan. By my reckoning, that leaves us with a £50 million transfer budget, having started the season with very little, but with those sales having gone through and also the significant reduction in the wage budget because with the likes of Delph and Richarlison leaving, Tarkovsky and uh, and McNeil aren't on as much money as those two were on from from what I've been able to gather. Um, therefore, there is, some, uh, there is some spare wage budget. There's some spare transfer budget and a team that's very much in need of some attention. This is the current Everton first team squad. If we have a look at that on squad depth, playing the 4-2-3-1 that I would expect to play. I know Frank is in love with uh, playing the 3-4-3 and is certainly seems to be leading towards that with the extra centre-backs that he's got at the club. Now, five very good centre-backs does suggest this is going to be the system he continues to lean towards. I am not a coward, so do not plan on playing five defenders ever under any circumstances. So we're going to do a 4-2-3-1 and that does leave a few more gaps in the squad. Uh, notably at fullback where we're looking pretty weak on both sides, obviously, as well as uh, Richarlison leaving in the summer, Luca Dean, the man whose name is on my Everton shirt, left Raston Villa back in January as well. And I guess you could say he's been replaced. Whether he's been adequately replaced, I'll leave that decision in the hands of the Everton fans. But I think we could probably do with strengthening a fullback on either side. To fund that, we can probably lose one of these centre-backs. Obviously, we're going to keep Tarkovsky, who's just come in. Um, but Mina, Keane, Holgate, Godfrey, I think one of them can probably leave. One of the issues I've identified uh, in the network game managing Everton and actually getting him into Europe is the likes of Mason Holgate become crucial because there are very few Everton homegrown at club players. So we have to cling on to them so we are going to be focusing on making sure we can keep the likes of Holgate and Anthony Gordon at the club, Tom Davies as well in midfield, and probably move on the, the players around them. So maybe one of Keane or Godfrey can probably move on. Um, in midfield, we've got Allen and Decore as starters, which is a pretty strong midfield too. I don't think we necessarily need to replace anybody in our regular midfield starters. You've got Davies, a returning Gabam in. Um, Gomez, who can probably move on this summer, in there as well. In attacking midfield, we do need to strengthen. We've got Deli Ali, but don't really have another option behind him if we're going to do this 4-2-3-1. Um, and we only really have one usable striker in Dominic Calvert-Lewin. So if we can find somebody who can play both of these roles, that could be quite handy. Dwight McNeil obviously fills a gap on the left-hand side. Um, and then you have got any one of Townsend, Gray, Gordon, Iwobi. You've got lots of options who can play anywhere else in this, in this attacking midfield three. How many of those options I'd like to use, I'm not quite convinced about. Um, but I think as a as a moment as a matter of priority, a striker, some fullbacks, and someone to play in this attacking midfield area probably is an additional 
Richarlison replacement as well as Dwight McDeal. £50 million to get that done. Seems like a tall order. But remember, we do have a few options to sell. One of the defenders, maybe Gomez as well. Maybe, I mean, if we can convince anybody to play for one of these attacking midfielders, there's likely to be interesting Gordon. I'd quite like to keep him again because of the whole homegrown at club thing. But if we can convince anybody to play for pay for Damari Gray, Alex Iwobi, Andros Townsend, one of them happily. Any, if anyone wants to pay for any of them, and Nathan Broadhead, you, you're done, son. You're 24 years old and you ain't good enough. Let's do some transfers. The Brazilians are in, boys and girls. I figured if we've sold Richarlison, we may as well use the Richarlison money to buy more Brazilians. So Caligari is in, 20-year-old Brazilian right back. Who, I mean, he's exactly the kind of right back I want in this system that we're going to be doing where we are basically playing wing backs with a back two because I love to attack and I love an attacking wing back. Caligari fits the bill. Look at the state of him. Only 20 years old. Only £13 million as well. Got the potential to end up much better as well. That's our new right back. And we have a Brazilian left back as well. Rogério, who likewise complete wing back on the left hand side. Uh, much more of an adequate replacement for, for Luca Dean, I think, compared to some of the uh, these other guys who've been brought in. Um, not quite so much potential to improve, but he was a little bit cheaper coming in from Sassulo. Um, £7.75 million, still consider that a nice little bargain. And then my third Brazilian, Talis Magno. He's actually somebody who I have in my hashtag Keverton team in the network game over on Twitch. Um, he's only a backup player. Um, over there, but we signed him a little bit later in the process. Here, I think he can offer some competition uh, for, or at least some deputization for Calvert Lewin up front. Um, he can play on either wing in the kind of roles that I want him to be able to play. At 20 years old as well, he's got bags of potential to improve and was a bargain at 11 million pounds. And then Ismail Assar is the uh, is the final attacker that we've brought in. For now, I still wouldn't be against bringing in another out-and-out -out striker, um, but I do think these are, these attacking midfield areas were an area of weakness in the squad. I know we've already got McNeil and Magno who've come in, but Saar can play probably ahead of them both on either side. I figure my first choice will be McNeil on one side, Saar on the other, and um, with Magno just able to be first man off the bench for any of the four attacking positions. Um he comes in from Watford, slightly more expensive, £27 million. It's the same price Watford paid for him way back when. And now we've got a player with some decent Premier League experience as well. And still a little bit of money left over having done those transfers. Looking at the squad, we do now need a backup goalkeeper. We've let all of our goalkeepers go apart from Jordan Pickford. And if we have a, a little nosy for our squad depth, we probably need to get rid of some of these attacking midfielders. If if you look at the wide areas, if we've got maybe McNeil and Saar over there, you've got Saar and Magno, and you've got Anthony Gordon who can play on either side. To me, that says Damari Gray, Alex Iwobi, um, Andros Townsend. I think these guys are all probably done based on the transfers that we've just brought in. So let's get all of those on the transfer list, offered out, and... Uh, try and use them to generate a little bit of money to continue the rebuild process. Likely, Salomon Rondon is not a player I anticipate using. Now we've got Magno in, Saar in, who can both play up front, and I'm looking to bring in another out-and-out -out striker as well. I think Rondon can move on. We're sticking with Deli Ali for now. Andre Gomez has left for £6 million in midfield. We've still got probably one more centre-back than we need, but Holgate can offer cover at left at right-back. So I'm not against keeping all five of them here. Uh, but if we get an offer for any of them, we'll probably accept that. And um, we're unlikely to need to use this fella who's in on loan from Sporting for the season. We'll keep him around, obviously, because I don't think we can uh, cancel his loan. Um, oh, we can terminate his loan. Well, there you go. Let's terminate his loan. He can disappear. And then we need the backup goalkeeper. So still work to do. But I think that is an excellent start. The Brazilians are in. Oh, things are starting to come together now, boys and girls. Armando Brozier is in on loan for the season as our additional striker. We have got the option to buy the £26 million at the end of the season if the deal works out nicely for him. Uh, we also have our new goalkeeper, Bernd Leno from Arsenal, was on the transfer list there. Picked him up for £12.25 He will 
compete directly with Jordan Pickford. I'm not sure who's going to be my starter yet, but it's nice to have two good options. And we brought Jamal Blackman in as just a third choice because you got to have a third choice goalkeeper. He was available on a free transfer. We have been able to start clearing out some of the players we don't plan to use as well. So Andros Townsend has gone to Celtic for £5 million. Damari Gray has gone to Dynamo Moscow for £13.5 million. Solomon Rondon has gone to Cruz Azul for £1.6 million. It leaves the squad currently looking like this. We could probably do with another attacking midfielder in. I'd still like to move Alex Iwobi on. Uh, Deli Ali, I'm not convinced about, and he is injured for the first couple of weeks of the season as well. So I know we can potentially play the likes of Anthony Gordon in there. Um, there's a few, I mean, Anthony Gordon, Man Magno. A lot of these can also play there, but I want someone who can kind of make that his own out-and-out -out position, and I'd like another central midfielder as well. We are working on a central midfielder currently, Nahitan Nandez, um, to come in and play central midfield from Cagliari. We've got... Decent money left because of the amount of players we're being able to ship through the door. Um, so there is still potential for more business to be done. Um, but it is the first day of the new season. So we need to get some matches played. This is the team that we're going to be playing on the first day of the new season. We probably just need to adjust some of these instructions because McNeil as a left footer is going to play as a winger. Calvert-Lewin usually works better as a pressing forward. So... Let's make him a pressing forward. Anthony Gordon will play in there today. Saar on the right-hand side. Again, probably better off as a winger. Both of those getting... You know what? I think we keep him as an inside forward. I think he's capable of doing both roles. McNeil... I mean, maybe just swap them over. Play them on the opposite sides so that we have them cutting in. I do like them cutting in. Uh, Decore and Allen then together in midfield. Michael Enko, Godfrey, Tarkovsky and Caligari with Pickford getting the nodding goal for the first day against Arsenal. So we'll get a few matches played. We're probably going to get all the way through to deadline day now, hopefully with a bit more, bit more business done and a decent start to the season. Obviously, Everton finishing 16th in the Premier League last year. The media think we're on course for 14th at the moment. I'd like a top half finish with all this business that we're doing. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think it's doable. And that brings us to the end of the transfer window. We did sneak a few more players in. So Matt Nandez, we looked at before, he is in. We also got Samuel Chukwesi as another wide option. We've got lots of very good wingers now. Very excited. We have sold a few as well. Um, as you can see, Alex Awobi has now also moved on. So we got rid of three, bought three in. I think that's fair. And Robin Quason is in as competition both for Deli Alley at the attacking midfield and Calvert-Lewin up front. I think it's important to have lots of options and lots of players who are versatile and able to play in lots of different positions. So this is what our squad now looks like. The attack, which at the start of this video was Calvert-Lewin and Solomon Rondon, is now turned on its head. We've got so many players who can play centre forward for us now. It means if we do get that big offer from Calvert-Lewin that sometimes comes in, we can probably let him go now. Attacking midfield three. Again, we've got so many different options now compared to where we were before. Saar, Kaison, um, McNeil, Magno, Chuck Wazy, um, Still got Anthony Gordon knocking around the place and Deli Ali as well. So many options in there. Um, we've added an extra body into central midfield in Nandes in an area that was already pretty strong. Likewise, we were already pretty strong at centre-back. Didn't need to do anything there, but have added two new full-backs, which have definitely given us another dimension going forward. And we've got some proper competition in goal for the first time in a gazillion years at Everton with Pickford and Leno fighting over the first team starting spot. Our start to the season has been pretty strong. Um, as you can see, we lost against Arsenal, but have beaten Leicester and Palace, drawn against Liverpool, which leaves us, as the window closes, comfortably in mid-table, which is where I'd like to think we'll end up finishing. There's your summary of the transfer window. So we spent £125 million received 79 million so it's not even that mad of a transfer window by my standards a net spend of less than 50 million pounds um with some pretty significant sales as well as the purchases of course the big headline being richarlison heading out of the club we're ninth on salary expenditure if we can finish ninth in the premier league i think that ends up looking pretty fair what we're going to do now is jump forward we're going to holiday forward until uh, until the January transfer window, see how we're getting on by then, see if we need to do any more business at that point or if we've got any money to do any more business and hopefully 
things are going swimmingly by the time we get there. Well, by all accounts, that appears to be a first half of the season that is going entirely to plan. We're in ninth place, like we said we wanted to be. If we have a look at the fixtures, you can see that we've been in pretty good form. Uh, we don't have Calvert-Lewin hovering near the top of the goal scoring charts, but other than that, everything is... Uh, in fact, Ismail Asar has scored more goals than Calvert-Lewin, which is a little bit of a surprise. Um, we've got a few players who are a little bit grumpy. Uh, Michael Keane and Jordan Pickford, I guess, only to be expected, want to start more games. Um, so I think the obvious thing to do is just bin those two off. Um, if they want to... St you know, Leno has established himself in the first team. And we've also got those five centre-backs that we talked about before. Mason Holgate, I've got no issue with him going out on loan for the rest of this season. Uh, we don't want to lose him permanently because we need him as a homegrown at club player for as and when we get into Europe, but we can certainly get rid of him for now. And Seamus Coleman is already out of contract at the end of the season, but I've got no issue with trying to shift him out now if it means that we can uh, do a little bit more business in January. So plans for the January transfer window. We'll try and get those guys sold first if we do manage to get them out the door. Um, I think maybe a central midfielder. We're a little bit light on star power in central midfield. Um, and then I guess we're probably going to need a right back as well. We don't really want to have to play Nandes at right back. And if Coleman's leaving, we don't have much in the way of a backup to Caligari because we already loaned Nathan Patterson out to West Brom earlier in the season. We could potentially recall him. We can't recall him, so we might need a right back as well. Well, January transfer window was about two things. Thing number one, get rid of players who were unhappy at the club. We've kind of done that. Thing number two, continue building for the future. So Michael Keane has gone out on loan to Huddersfield. They're not actually making any wage contribution, but he was so unhappy. He was being disruptive. We've binned him off to the end of the season. We can deal with him then. Rogerio, who we brought in in the summer, uh, just wasn't getting in the team. So we've sold him on for double what we paid for him. He wanted to leave. That seems like a good piece of business as well. We've then reinvested that money in two new midfield players, Maximilian Eggstein. Um, just, I love a box-to-box -box midfielder, and he's a very good one. A little bit younger than Alan and Decore, who have been our central midfield so far. And then in the spirit of that, Fausto Vera. Um, has come in from Argentinos Juniors as well as a younger option in midfield as we start to try and freshen up the aging air of the pitch. Our salary has now gone up to eighth rather than ninth. So we have a new goal. We want to finish eighth in the Premier League. Uh, we're currently ninth. Uh, we've kind of done some work towards trying to improve morale in the club. Uh, Davies and uh, Holgate still both want to leave for more game time. No one wanted to take them on loan in January, so they're still here. Gabamin, I'm pretty much done with, but no one wants to make a sensible offer for, so he's still knocking around for now. Um, and Rozier's not getting any game time, and if we could terminate his loan, we would, but we can't. Safe to say, we're not going to be spending £26 million on him in the summer. Because of the fact that we are down to just the one left back, we have recalled Jared, Jared Branthwaite, and Nathan Patterson from their loans. So they're both back in the first team squad as like emergency cover at left back if need be. Ben Godfrey can play out there as well. Um, but this is this is the team that goes into the second half of the season. The only other thing that happened is Bayern Munich came in for Calvert Lewin for an £18 million pound deal. Obviously, we turned down because that's stupidly low, even though he's only scored nine goals this season. He's still Dominic Calvert Lewin. Let's do the rest of the season. Let's face it, it's it's already... Everton have already done better than they did last year. Now let's just see if we can push up to eight or maybe even some European qualification with these new players that we've brought in. Oh, folks, just call me the rebuild master. We've we've ruined everything for everyone ever to win the Champions League. Arsenal, Man United both missing out and are going to have to be in the Europa League. Chelsea finished 12th, which certainly has helped us out a little bit. But yeah, we have had an absolutely fantastic second half of the season, uh, which has led to us not just qualifying for the Champions League. We did have a run through to the FA Cup final as well, losing to Manchester United there, unfortunately. We had a little bit of a wobble there against Southampton and Brentford. We could have ended up finishing even higher potentially, but these runs of consecutive wins, huge, huge difference makers. The key players for us, if we look at our top goal scorers, Calvert-Lewin, very much right to turn down the offer from Bayern Munich. 
in January. He turned himself around in the second half of the season, started rattling in the goals. Ismail Assar, questions may have been asked when we spent £27 million on him, but he has weighed in with 23 goal contributions. Dwight McNeil, which Everton fans will be pretty pleased to see him weighing in with 24 goal contributions. Obviously, he's going to be at Everton in real life this season. 10 from Chuck Chukwesi as well. Um, if we look purely on assists, the goals are coming from those fullbacks. Uh, Caligari with 11 assists. Michael Enko, who I thought we needed to replace. Uh, evidently, we didn't. He was much better than Rodrigo, the guy we brought in for him with eight assists from him and Nick McNeil um, being a creative force as well with 10 assists from that left-hand side. Um, and the best players of the season, average rating-wise, we will kind of ignore Branthwaite because he only played three times, but... Um, how many of these are my boys? Caligari, player of the season, my signing. Yerry Mina, we extended his contract. Obviously, McNeil was here before. Yeah, I got that one wrong. He was great. Calvert-Lewin. I mean, there's not many more of my players who are up here. Uh, Bernd Leno, Ismail Assar. Um, did we have any absolute flops? I mean, I guess Rodrigo, total flop of a signing. Um, Armando Brozier as well. Uh, probably didn't really work out the way we might have hoped that it would. Um, Nandez. Hmm. Not best average rating, but was an important player. Talis Magno, um, I mean, he's one for the future. We did sign a lot of players in his position. He's still only 20 years old, though. So he might still come good. And then, of course, we had Eggstein uh, come in as well and Fausto Vera. So quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of players brought in. But ultimately, we've taken an Everton team that almost got relegated and got them into the Champions League in one season of transfers yeah it was an expensive one we spent 119 million pounds and um, but we did bring in um 41 and a half million plus the 50 million for um for richarlison as well let's not make it look like i've done an 80 million pound net spend um we also had the 50 million that had already come in so 90 million in 119 out so it's a net spend of about 30 million um to turn this team from the fifth worst to the fourth best we'll call that one a success. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Let me know down in the comments section who you'd like to see me do a rebuild on next. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you very much for watching.